Hi everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services back with another tutorial. This one is about installing and using plugins in Sibelius 7. Sibelius 7 introduced a new way to find, install, and manage plugins right from within the program without having to navigate through folders on your computer. We're also going to show you six very handy and free plugins that you can download and use today. Before we begin, a brief note about our upcoming Sibelius training sessions in New York City where you'll learn tips like these and much more on Friday, July 20th, 2012 at the Juilliard School from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Please visit our website at sibelius123.com for complete details about the sessions and for registration information. We hope to see you there. Now, a plugin is a feature that basically extends the functionality of the software without actually modifying the program itself. Most often it automates things that can be done manually, but usually require many tedious steps to accomplish. Sibelius comes preloaded with many, many plugins that are quite useful in their own right, and you should explore all of them to see if there are some that can speed up your workflow. Plugins can be accessed from various tabs on the ribbon, depending on the category of the plugin. But there are hundreds more that are being written all the time, and those can be downloaded right from within the program itself. Let's do that now. So we go to File, Plugins, Install Plugins, and you have to have an internet connection for this to work. Sibelius checks on your behalf to see if there are any new or updated plugins since the last time it checked. In our case, we just recently checked it, so there are no new or updated plugins. So we'll select All Plugins. And Sibelius will organize them into different categories. You can actually see here if you click on one of them, it will provide you with a brief description of the plugin and also the plugin's author. When you click on them, Sibelius suggests a category in Sibelius in which to install the plugin. And you see here these different options. If we keep going, Sibelius will suggest different categories. But you also see some categories that say underscore add. I've actually added those because I like to keep my uh, shipping plugins and downloaded plugins separate from each other, but that's not entirely necessary. If you wish to create a new category, you can simply check this box and type it in and then save it to that particular category. There's an interesting plugin that just came out called Add LV Symbols to Notes. I think we'll try downloading that. We'll put it in the Notes and Rests category and install it. And there it is. That's all we have to do. Now let's try to find it. I actually happen to know that the Notes and Rest category is in the Note Input tab on the ribbon. So we go to Plugins, and if we scroll down, there it is. By the way, you can also click this menu to filter all the different categories, and if we just select Notes and Rest underscore Add, we just get that submenu of all the different plugins that are under the Note Input tab. Furthermore, if you're like me and you start accumulating lots and lots of plugins and you forget where they are, you can actually type the name of the plugin into the search box and it'll come up. There are quite a few plugins that have accidentals, or I should say deal with accidentals. And if I type in accidentals in the search box, all of them come up. Oh, here's one that's interesting. Add accidentals to all sharpened flat notes. And if I select it, it comes up right away. Okay, so another way to make plugins even more useful is to ass assign a shortcut to them. And we do that again by going to the File tab, and this time we'll go to Preferences. We go to Keyboard Shortcuts, and then if you haven't already done so, you can create a new feature set based off your original feature set. This one's called Custom User Copy. We go to Plugins, we go to Add LV Symbol to Notes, the plugin we just downloaded, and then you can choose a shortcut of your liking. In this case, we'll choose Control-Shift-L for LV. And that way, anytime you type that shortcut, that plugin will be invoked. One more item of note regarding the placement of plugins. You can actually move where they are on the ribbon. You noticed for each tab there's a plugins 
button. Well, not all of them. The Parts tab doesn't actually have one, but that doesn't mean that there can't be one there. We recently downloaded another plugin that I'll show you in just a bit called Open Extracted Parts. And when I downloaded it, I put it into a new category, category called Parts underscore Add. Let me show you that. Again, we'll go to Plugins. This time we'll go to Edit Plugins. And you see all the different plugins that I've downloaded. Let me actually collapse all the categories. There it is, Parts underscore Add. And I just have one plugin in there right now, Open Selected Parts. I'll click on that. By default, that category showed up in the Home tab. If we click this drop-down menu, I can actually place it on the Parts tab of the ribbon. And when I do that and hit Close, you'll see a new button show up on the Parts tab of the ribbon. And sure enough, there's my handy plugin. We'll demo that in just a few moments. Let me show you some handy plugins, six to be exact today, that might make your life a whole lot easier when using Sibelius. The first of these is called Edit Part Instrument Names. There's also a similar plugin just called Edit Instrument Names, but this plugin incorporates the functionality of Edit Instrument Names plus a little bit more. I have it in the Text tab under Text underscore Add. It's actually off the screen, but let me filter it so I can show you it. There it is. And before we open it, you'll notice when you set up a score in Sibelius, if you have multiple instruments that are the same, like flute one and flute two, Sibelius won't actually add one and two by default. So you have to go in, you would actually, you know, click, double click, and you can edit it here. But if you have a large orchestral score, that can be tedious. So you use this plugin, and in short order, you can change all the names of your instruments. So let's say flute one will also abbreviate the short name. In fact, you can also do something even cooler if you read the directions here type backslash n backslash to add a hard return or caret b or caret and the pound sign to add a flat or a sharp respectively and let's say flute 2 oh and let's say flute 2 is played by Paul and let's change this just to cello now, you'll notice if the full name in the part has not changed, it will also update the full name in the part. So let's hit OK. And just like that, we get a message. All these instrument names have been changed, as well as the short names, as you can see here, flute 1, 2, etc. And if we go to the part, let's go to this flute 1 part we actually see the flute name, but say I actually don't want Peter's name to show in the part, I only want it to show in the score. I can go back to that same plugin and actually delete his name as well as Paul's and Mary. And thus the part name will actually become, become unlinked from the score name. And if I go back to that part, now it's just shows flute one without the actual name of the person. So this is a very powerful plugin and in short order you can really have full customization over the names of your parts and instruments in the score. The next one is called exchange staff contents and that's actually found in the other category and this is extremely powerful. Let's go to the home plugins and we'll use our handy filter here there it is, Exchange Staff Contents. This is so helpful, I've actually assigned a shortcut to it, Control E. And what that does is it literally exchanges the contents of two staves that you selected. So say you want the Flute 2 and Flute 1 part to switch. Just simply run this plugin. You get a note. You can dismiss it for future instances of the plugin. And just like that, the music has changed. You can also run it on non-contiguous instruments and this time I'll just type the shortcut control E. It's a really powerful plugin and so simple. Okay so the next one is fill selection with slash notes and this is under notes and rests. It really just does what it says 
if we go to the guitar or maybe you have a drum part and we want to go to notes and rests fill selection with slash notes again you have all sorts of choices we'll just keep the default for now and you get slash notation very handy the next one is really very cool this has to do with harp glissandos and you see here we have a harp gliss but it won't actually play back by default when it crosses over uh, another staff on a grand staff let's listen no glissando heard. So what we need to do is actually tell Sibelius to play the gliss. And we do this by running this plugin. It's literally just called harp gliss. And you'll find it under the harp category. I've actually placed it in my play tab. We run it. And then you can actually specify a tuning. So say we want a F minor harmonic scale. So we'd say C, D flat, E, F, G, A flat, and B flat. If you wanted a sharp, you could actually type G sharp. And we can actually try to approximate this crescendo. Piano is around, this is the old MIDI, you know, 0 to 127 velocity. We'll say around 30 and we'll end around 96. That's pretty good. Another option, you, you can actually show the tuning as text or a diagram. Let's show it as a diagram. We'll have Sibelius play the last note and say OK. And if all goes well, you see a bunch of MIDI messages. These are hidden MIDI messages. They can be turned off if you really don't like to see them under View and then go to Invisibles and actually uncheck Hidden Objects. So you can show or hide those as you like. But those are just a bunch of MIDI messages that actually play all those notes. We'll just drag this into place. This is a harp diagram that actually shows those pedals. And we have a nice harp gliss. Another fine plugin that was recently added is called Add LV Symbols to Notes. In fact, that's the one that we just downloaded moments ago. And it does what it says. Select a chord or chords or notes that you wish to place LV symbols on. And remember, I put those under Note Input, Plugins, Notes and Rests, and I even assigned a shortcut to that as well. Voila! You have LV symbols on your notes. It's really great. Finally, Open Selected Parts. This plugin allows you to control which parts are open or not at any given time. And say we only want to work on a certain number of parts, say the oboe and the cello and the viola. We can say, and by the way, I'm command clicking is what I'm doing to actually highlight those. Click OK. And now you see each of these parts are open. And I can actually cycle through them by either, you know, pressing, uh, clicking on the tab or typing control tab to cycle through all of them. So that's an overview of plugins, how to install them, and some of the most useful ones. There are plenty more that you can experiment with and download. Please visit our website at www.nycmusicservices.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nycmusicservices. And don't forget about those training sessions Friday, July 20th, 2012 in New York City. Thanks for watching.